like Donna said, thank you so much. Here we are, my friends, getting ready to honor tonight the Navy, but honestly, we're celebrating everybody. And so with that said, before we get started with any of the movement, I'd like to remind you that if you need a small towel, feel free to grab a small towel, keep that handy. Um, if you've got yoga blocks, fantastic. If you don't, here's an awesome suggestion. You can grab similar size shaped books and these books then become the extensions of your hands as well. And so with that, you can grab some books. If not, a sturdy water bottle as I hydrate with my Mandalorian water bottle. This is the way. And so with that said, I invite you, my friends, to get comfortable. So let's get seated or laying down. I'm going to take a few minutes, and I say minutes, but I mean moments, to just chat and give you an opportunity to settle into some stillness. Here we are in New York City. I'm over here on the Upper West Side. We are at complete darkness because it's getting dark now, like 4 p.m. And so it gives our chance our body a chance throughout the, the course of this particular day to settle into some sort of restoration, relaxation, guided rest, which is one of the pillars of our successful Veteran Yoga Project. So with that said, get comfortable. My friends, my name is Cesar F. Barajas. I cannot thank you enough for allowing me to be here with you all. I'm an international wellness mentor and advocate. I am a mental health advocate an activist. I have been a professional performer for 30 plus years. I've done a number of things in my life that are super cool and super awesome. I'm currently an adjunct professor at Columbia University where I teach meditation and mindfulness. I'm also on the staff at the Manhattan College in the Bronx where I help to lead their student veteran organizations in retreats and guided breath work and meditations. But all of that to say, I'm most proud of being a United States Navy sailor. And so what I brought out from the woodworks, my friends, is my original boot camp issue Dixie cup. And so I'm gonna rock this, because this is how I rocked it 20 something years ago. And it still fits and it still looks good. And I love this Dixie cup and you gotta rock it to the side for some swagger. So as you get comfortable and settled, go ahead and find a place where the body is moving. So as you're wiggling the toes and wiggling the fingers, I'm going to remind you now, remind you about 10,000 times more, to feel free to text BYP at 707070 to donate or tell your friends. We'd love that. This year, Veterans Yoga Project celebrated 10 years. So part of that movement, can we get a raising of the roof? Can we get some dancing? Yo, 10 years, my friends, 10 years. And in the midst of those 10 years, the original mission statement was to establish us as a way to support recovery and resilience. And can we holler for just a moment at the amount of sheer strength and resilience that's been needed over the course of the last 18 to 24 months? So do me a favor, bring a hand to heart center. And one of the pillars of our foundational strength is that of gratitude. Can we just say, Thank you, either to yourself, to someone that you know, to the community at large, to the homies, to the tribes, to all your peeps. Because we wouldn't honestly be here right now if we hadn't had that support and that symbiotic gratitude that flows back and forth. So thank you. Thank you. It has been hard. I had an anxiety and panic attack before I logged on. So I'm going to speak to more to mental health advocacy and why this work is important. And so the five pillars of our success involves breath, guided movement, guided meditation, giving yourself an opportunity to meditate, give yourself a chance to be guided in rest, and then finally in gratitude. And it's a accumulation of all those things. So in that attitude of gratitude, I'm going to ask us all to take the next three deep breaths. And let me prompt this. The next three deep breaths are going to be the biggest and deepest ones you've taken yet today. And so imagine as the top of the chest rises and the rib cage expands and the belly inflates, you're breathing out. And as you breathe in and continue to do so, we're going to do so in silence to honor every single person that has been lost. And there are too many reasons that we lose people. So we're just going to find ourselves sharing thoughts and gratitude and maybe grief, <laughs> maybe joy, maybe a memory or two that sparks something inside of you and we'll speak to those that we've lost due to COVID, due to systemic racism, broken democracies, and especially those that we've lost that have served in our US armed forces.
My friends, as you take the next deep breath in, allow whatever's coming up for you to be felt. Can you imagine what it might feel like? As I said that, my heart was pounding in my chest. There was a closing of my throat, a tension through the left side of my neck. So giving myself a chance to physically tap into what I'm feeling and then allows me to feel grief and immense love all at the same time. And all of those can coexist. And so part of what we're doing here is to reiterate that in 2020 alone, 87% of our attendees, our students, reported a reduction in that distress. So as I continue to share this info, can you continue to breathe in and simply breathe out? And then 71% of those attendees found a reduction in pain. My life has been a myriad of things, as I stated before, but I've also faced too many troubles to count, including losing multiple people over the last 15 months. Loss of the greatest love of my life, finding myself upset, burned out, suffering from vicarious traumas and compassion fatigue. And I say all that because not only we're presenting the mindful resilience team in nature, but we're also speaking to how the body can be affected by external trauma. So with that said, can you do me a favor and find yourself taking a spot on your back, whatever feels the most comfortable for you. And so as we slowly start to move out of sitting position, what we're doing is changing the plane of existence. But that plane of existence still involves a tall spine a relaxed state of alertness. So can you imagine the shoulders drawing away from the ears? And as you lay your body down on the ground, please know that we are celebrating Veterans Gratitude Week. And yes, we are taking this week long celebration to do so, but yo, can we be real? Let me tell you the truth. I'm gonna spit it just like this. Every day, I'm speaking to my microphone, every day is Veterans Day. Every day, this country was built on the foundation of all of those that have served. And so yoga and meditation have thousands of years old roots and the practices that we find ourselves in. So as you get comfortable laying on your back, can you imagine the bones getting heavier? Can you imagine the support behind the skull? I see you, Finn. Thank you, Papa. I see you, Sam. Thank you, love. Imagine where the rib cage and torso lay on the ground. Imagine that the arms then extended, then just get a little more dense feeling where the hips, legs, feet are supported and finding a, a place of stillness that works best for you. And so maybe it's feet on the ground, maybe it's knees bent, but allowing the shoulders to relax away from the ears. And as you continue to breathe, can we create a sound? Can you hear the breath coming in? Imagining where it's traveling, where it's going. Maybe it's one hand to heart center, maybe one hand across the belly. And then as you breathe out, feel the body sink, feel the belly deflate. And so know that what we're doing is effective. These integrative treatments of yoga and meditation and breath work have all been scientifically proven to transform stress into resiliency. We can find ourselves in a position where like myself, I suffer daily. No, let me correct that. I suffer hourly from post-traumatic stress, illness. And so here I am and have taken the tools that Dr. Dan and Brianna and Rebecca Smith and the entire crew at VYP have taught me over the last six years. Oh, I would be remiss if I didn't mention Mama Bear, Deborah Jeanette. And so because they taught me how to breathe, I now have a handle. The anxiety attack that I had before we started has been happening to me for the last couple of days. So I find myself in a position to simply receive it. So can you put yourself in a position to simply receive? Can you give yourself a chance here as is, right here, right now? Don't change a thing because you are absolutely perfectly imperfect to just be. We got nowhere to go. We got nothing to do. And then when you're ready, if you're ready, can the next couple of deep breaths create an audible sigh? Oh, man. That audible sigh helps to further relax the face, the muscles in your jaw, cheeks, neck, shoulders. Mm, maybe it's an HM hum.
And so what we're doing here is an active movement, even though you're not quote unquote doing anything and it takes practice. So as we continue to move and you find yourself taking any one of our VYP instructors classes, and please know that we offer well over 100 free yoga classes each week in person and online. And this is all at a zero cost to you, zero cost to our vets, to the families, all the more reason to text VYP at 707070 to just offer maybe just a little bit. And if not, text us to say, yo, you're doing a good thing. Or text us to say, hey, I've got something on my mind and my heart. Reach out. Communication, social connections are all key. If anything, we've all learned that in this currently happening pandemic world. My friends, over the course of the next deep breath in, can you draw the knees into the chest? Ah, oh, yeah, as the knees come into your chest, maybe we remove what our pillows or blankets are supporting our skulls and that if you would like my invitation to you is to move that away from your head. And yo, let's move and groove, friends. I see you, Finn. I keep calling out my newest best friend. As you bring the knees into the chest, can you let the body just rock and roll? So it's a gentle rocking from side to side, giving yourself a chance to maybe take the small of the back and create little circles with the small of the back. Maybe you give yourself a chance to rock north and south or even east, west. Whatever it is that you choose to do is absolutely correct. And now find yourself in a place where you challenge yourself, yes, but if you start to feel any pain or discomfort, please know that you do not have to do any of it. You are welcome to just sit and find stillness. And stillness in itself is still yoga. Stillness in itself is a gift because we live on a hamster wheel in this life of ours. Many of us, myself included, have found myself dipping my toes back into the rat race. So now I have this greater awareness of what stillness can do for me and what movement can do for me. And with that said, my friends, we're gonna find ourselves laying on our side. Pick a right side, pick the left side, whatever side you choose is gonna be awesome. Can you bring those knees up a little bit higher than your belly button? Maybe the arm is cradled by your head or the head is cradled by the arm, how about that? Maybe the yoga block near you is supporting the head and then just give yourself a chance here to once again, Take a deep breath in. Oh, sighing it out. And then find yourself using the strength of your arms to come up to a seated position. And then we're going to make our way into a victory pose. I like to call this my favorite rejuvenation pose. Knees nice and wide. Big toes kissed together. The arms are going to extend out. In our traditional yoga world, it's often known as a child's pose, but trauma-informed yoga, we teach it as a victory pose. So imagine a room full of soldiers or sailors, and I talk about child's pose. So sometimes those feelings come up of, eh, I don't want to be called a child. So they're always something that we're doing. So within the VYP world, we're always adjusting language, lingo, are we being mindful? And so give yourself a chance here as you extend those arms straight out overhead to relax into this. We're gonna activate in just a moment. So by relaxing, feel the points of contact, patting underneath the, the knuckles of the hands are spread nice and wide. You've got your elbows, forearms relaxing, the forehead, which is often referred to as our third eye, wisdom chakra is resting on the floor. So can you imagine as you activate, we're gonna extend the hands towards the front of your mat. And as you do so, the elbows are gonna slightly elevate off. And so imagine the inside of your elbows have flashlights on them. And we're trying to light up the ceiling. Hi, Tasha, I see you, sister. Thank you for being here. And so as you find the knees spreading nice and wide, and again, feel free to modify anything you need. Modifications, my friends, are signs of wisdom, not weakness. Give yourself a chance to sink the hips back towards the heels. And then when you're ready, if you're ready, give yourself a chance to move into tabletop. As you move into tabletop, we're going to bring hands directly over the shoulders. Underneath, find the alignment, find the knees under the hips and create that tension in the spine. So imagine you're about to get tickled. So there's something that happens to our belly. And so we're going to imagine also that we're carrying a softball or a grapefruit underneath our chin attached to the top of our chest. So that's to not hyperextend the neck or put us in a position where we might hurt ourselves. And so as we move into what I lovingly refer to as some meow moos, meow moo, cat cows. We're gonna inhale as you look up towards the ceiling. So imagine the belly coming towards the floor. And so what we're doing here is just elongating the spine, giving ourselves a chance to sit into a place of decompression, 
by activation. And then slowly as you exhale, tucking the chin into the chest, rounding out the shoulders. And here I invite you, my friends, as you go over the next dozen or so of these to find whatever movement you think you might need. So maybe it's a wiggling of the hips. Maybe it's sitting back towards the heels. Maybe you transfer the weight from your hands onto your fists so that you give yourself less strain on the wrists. Maybe you give yourself a chance to open up a hand to the sky. Honestly, play, explore. The professional dancer in me always wants to incorporate some sort of movement. So give yourself a chance to open. Yes, I see you, Dr. Dan, thank you, sir. And as you find your body adjusting and moving, can we come into a connection of the breath into the movement? So maybe an inhale puts you in a particular place. Oh, maybe the exhale puts you in another place. And as we begin to finish this up, give yourself one or two more of the meow moves. That is the official yoga Sanskrit name, meow moo. No, I'm just kidding. It's not. Please don't listen to me. <laughs> Please listen to me. And then find some stillness. Give yourself a chance with the tall spine to extend one leg back behind you, the second leg, and we're just gonna lower to the belly, giving yourself an opportunity here to create a standing up position, but on the ground. So just laying on the ground, you're gonna bring belly to the ground, create a pillow with your hands, give your forehead an opportunity to rest. And as you extend the legs back, just give yourself a chance here to be in a different position. So if we flipped over, we would be in our guided relaxation pose. If we were standing up, you would be in mountain pose. So all of this is connected. Again, we're just changing the directions. Take a deep breath in. Let's bring the hands underneath the shoulders. We're going to come up into a gentle baby cobra. So there's a small stretch through the chest, upper abs, maybe the belly, depending on how much of that extension you have. Can we relax the shoulders away from the ears? Oh, yeah. And then allow the body to come right back down on that exhale, coming back to the floor, relaxing the hips, relaxing the legs, tops of the shoelaces are relaxed on the mat. Can you bring the hands out a little bit wider by another two or three inches? So instead of just underneath the shoulders, we're moving sideways, east and west. And then we're going to come back up when you're ready on your inhale. So at no point, my friends, are we ever retaining the breath. So I would love to remind you to keep breathing. Ooh, yeah, toss, draw those shoulders away from your ears. There we go. And then allow the next exhale to bring the body back down. Forgive me for drinking on camera, but I'm doing a lot of talking here. And then last time, we're going to extend the hands out even farther, maybe another five or six inches outside of shoulder width, east and west, and then come up into an extension in that baby cobra. And maybe here, as the arms come up, you give yourself a chance to twist left shoulder into the center. So looking over that right shoulder, very slowly, very gentle, looking back at our feet and then coming back to center, maybe the right shoulder comes and twists into center as we extend eyesight and gaze back over our left shoulder and then give yourself a chance to come back to center and then imagine floating to the ground imagine drawing the body near to the floor yes all of this comic book slow motion yes and then we'll bring the knees together and we're going to use the hands underneath our shoulders to press our hips back towards our heels i like to call this a turtle pose i'll tell you why in just a moment so we're in that victory pose. And so as the knees bend and the hips go back towards the heels with the legs together, Sam, if you don't mind, I'm going to make a point here. Thank you, my friend. Arms come at your sides. And so with your arms at your sides, it's just a different way to relax. So letting that forehead rest on your floor, your arms are at your sides here. There you go, Finn, bend at your knees. And then give yourself here to create that turtle shell. So I love to personally refer to, refer to this as ninja turtle pose. You like that, Finn? Ninja Turtles. And so give yourself a chance to breathe here. Bring the hands very slowly and gently underneath the shoulders. We are going to curl the toes, my friends. I'm going to ask that you gently extend the hips up into the air as we come into our first downward facing dog. I'm from Texas. I can't help but say dog with two, two syllables. Dog. That's how you tell someone's from Texas. The word cat becomes cat. All right, friends, in that downward facing dog, pedal through the feet. So maybe you're walking that dog. Maybe you're extending one leg to bend, the other one to straighten. Can you imagine as the hips go sending straight up into the air that we're creating an upside down V? Yes, Annette, that looks amazing. Give yourself a chance to slowly look at your hands. On the inhale, 
find where you're going. On the exhale, can we take the next 10 baby steps to bring your feet to your hands for a forward fold? Tiny, tiny steps. Excellent. I see you, Casey. Thank you. And so when you come to that forward fold, give me a generous bend in those knees. With that generous bend in the knees, imagine the bottom of your rib cage touching the tops of your thighs. Arms are either dangling. Maybe hands grab opposite elbows. Maybe the body gently sways from side to side. But what I would love to envision is that the head is hanging over so heavy that whatever is not bringing us joy, whatever tension or tightness we might be carrying is actually pouring out of our heads. And then give yourself a chance to bend through the knees even more, relaxing the arms as they dangle at your sides, keeping the chin tucked into your chest. I'm gonna test you all, and I'll tell you why in just a moment. Can we slowly make our way to the standing, slowly? So we're unraveling from the pelvis, the lower back, the middle back, the upper back shoulders. Tasha, you failed. Annette, you failed. Right now, Sam's winning. It's always a race. Yep, Sam, I think you're my winner. And here's why. You didn't fail. You didn't fail at anything. <laughs> when I say to go up slow, this is everyone's tendency. <gasps> okay, so slow means in my class, <laughs> take your time. <laughs> Sam, you're my winner, thank you. Text VYP 707070 to claim your prize. <laughs> Friends, moving slowly gives us a chance to move away from the way society wants us to. So let's find a majestic mountain pose. Ground the feet, nice gentle bend in the knees. Yeah, feel free to face the camera. As the palms extend out, there is still a strength. So don't give me little noodle hands, you're extending the power. So this is just like, when the emperor is trying to kill Luke Skywalker and return the Jedi. So those hands are open. All of that energy is flowing from fingertips. And as you allow the shoulders to relax away from the ears, can you imagine that light that comes from your heart shining towards the ceiling, maybe to where the sky or ceiling meets the wall. And then we're gonna take an opportunity here to shift all of the weight to our left foot. With the hands just where they are, we're just gonna draw the right leg up in the air for a moment. Testing that balance, yes. And then we're gonna slowly bring that right leg down and then transfer the weight over to the right foot, bringing the left leg up in the air. And we're gonna go back and forth just like that, slowly, slowly, Annette, slowly, Tasha. I'm just kidding, I'm gonna keep picking. And finding that balance. So what we're doing here is allowing the body to shift from left to right and maybe give yourself, I don't know, two or three more, nice, Finn. Give yourself a chance to just rock and roll and then find stillness. Shake all that out for me. <sighs> shaking out the legs, shaking out the arms. Maybe it's a very gentle. If you're the modern dancer that I am, maybe there's a blade involved here too. So give yourself a chance to reground. Can we come back into our feet? What I'm gonna ask you to do now is the same exact thing, rocking forward and back. So we're gonna come up on all the toes. And so we're coming up on releve. So for my dancers in the room, this is one of the ballerina poses. So as you come up on releve, I want you to start to lean so far forward that you actually fall forward. Great, so that's a nice balance. Good, and so then we rock back on the heels. We're gonna do the exact same thing on the heels allow the body to very gently fall back. So now you know where your balances are, right and left, east and west, north and south, front and back. With that said, find that balance here. Give yourself a chance to slowly bend through the knees. Inhale as the arms reach for the sky, standing mountain. On the exhale, through the heart center, whew, bending at the knees, forward fold, allowing the body to slowly make its way to the ground. Relax your chin to your chest, Tasha. You don't have to look at me. I'll tell you exactly what you need to do. So bend your legs, straighten the hips up in the air, and then take a moment here to rock the body from side to side, find some movement. Let's come into a halfway lift. So we're gonna create a flat back, bring the hands to the heart center. Looks just like this. So imagine I put a plate of cookies on your back. Please don't spill my cookies. I love cookies. And then allow the hands to plant on the ground. Can you come into a push-up position? All of my veterans, I know Tasha is one of my army vets. I love you. I don't even know if you're still in. We got to catch up. Tasha and I went to school together. PV represent, baby. And so allow yourself to come into that push-up pose and just hold. So here, we're still maintaining that chin, holding a softball underneath our chin and to the top of the chest. I was going to say grapefruit, but grapefruit is nasty. I don't like it. 
And so nice, that's beautiful. So we're in the same position we were in just a moment ago when we were in mountain pose. Can you bring the knees to the ground, taking a deep breath in to slowly lower hips, ribs, and shoulders all at the same time as you tuck the elbows into the rib cage and allow everything in that upper body to fall to the ground. Take a deep breath in, however you would like to find yourself coming back into a child's pose, that victory pose, restoration pose. And from there, you will curl the toes, extending the hands underneath the shoulders. And when you're ready, we're gonna meet back in a downward facing dog. Yes, Miss Annette, thank you for grabbing. I love that you grabbed the blanket to help support the knees. And in that down dog, take a deep breath in. We're gonna move everything we just did a little faster. So let's connect the breath. Inhale as you look at the hands. On your exhale, can you take five steps to get to your forward fold? All the while breathing, all the while giving your body a chance to just be there as is. You are so welcomed here and so loved and so appreciated. Over the course of the next slow, let's retest you all, make your way to standing. Once you get to that mountain pose, find the body shifting. Head will be the last thing that comes up. So my invitation to you is to allow the shoulders and the head to be the very last things that come up. Beautiful. Fantastic. Thank you, friends. And once you come to standing, palms are facing front. So this is also an awesome position because this is the position of giving. This is you telling someone, ultimately, I am yours. And this is how you also receive, which I think is just beautiful. So can we take a deep breath in? Shifting the weight over to the left foot. On the exhale, rocking the body over to the right foot. On the exhale, coming back to the left foot, draw the right knee into your chest. It's a moment of balance. Hugging and squeezing, holding for just a breath or two. And then give yourself a chance to kick that right leg forward and out as you bring it right to the ground. Shifting the weight to the right foot, bringing that left leg up into the air, hugging that left knee into your chest at whatever height is the most comfortable and then kicking that left leg out bringing it right back down take the deep breath in find the body coming up on the toes for my ballerinas in the room brianna you know all about this creating that quarter de bras and then allow the heels to slowly come to the ground bending through the knees allowing the body forward fold over oh, good inhale as we come into that flat back we'll bring the hands to heart center creating that tabletop on your exhale let's plant the hands onto the ground creating that high plank push-up pose taking a deep breath in find yourself creating that tension on the exhale can we bring the knees to the ground can we allow as the exhale continues to lower hips ribs and shoulders and head all at the same time to the ground on your next inhale, can we imagine that we're going to use the next several movements? You get to explore Yogi's choice to make your way to downward facing dog. I will meet you in that upside down taco because tacos are life. However you want to get there. Yeah. So part of the exploration is what can your body physically do today? What do you feel is, eh. we're going to just take the slower version. So once you're in that down dog, find some movement, pedal through the feet, take the next deep breath in, and on that exhale, can you find stillness? <sighs> can we look at our hands? And on the next exhale, take the next three steps to walk your feet to your hands. We're going to bring the feet together for everyone's favorite, chair pose! Yay! Feet come together. So imagine we're gluing through the ankles knees, thighs. So we all automatically bring hands overhead. But guess what? You can bring the hands to heart center. You can bring the hands and create airplane wings. You can bring the hands to give you some sassy hips. I see you, Guadalupe. Casey, you all, you all know about them sassy hips. Good. So as <laughs> Taz is like, okay, stop talking. Well, I'm actually talking because I'm wasting time and I'm making you hold this chair pose. But I'm not going to hold it that much longer. Take a deep breath in, my friends. Lower just another quarter of an inch. And then take your time to come to standing. Oh, nice, T. I see you, T. My boy Terrence in the house. Take the deep breath in. Arms reach up overhead. On the exhale, forward fold through the heart center. Whew. Inhale, flat back. Hands come to heart center, creating that tabletop. And then as you do, plant the hands. Come into push-up pose. Take a deep breath in here. On your exhale, you can either do full body lower or you can bring the knees to the ground and slowly bring. Beautiful, Annette. 
hips, ribs, shoulders, head to the floor. Inhale slowly and on your next exhale, I'll meet you in a downward facing dog, however you choose to get there. This is my opportunity to get some water. All right, friends, we're continuing on with our sun salutation A. For those of you who are not aware, we're in the middle of the sun salutation alpha. Take a deep breath in as the right leg comes up in the air. As that right leg comes up in the air, can you bring that right leg through the heart center and then hover for just a moment? Like think about squeezing, rounding the shoulders. Can you bring your face in close enough to kiss the top of your knee because self-love is important? And then plant that right foot in between your hands. So even if it means you pick it up and put it there, even if you step it there. So let's find that alignment. Right knee is in line with the right ankle. I see that look of concern on your face, Tasha. You're good. Right leg is bent. I see a baby. There you go. And then from there, give yourself a chance to come up into warrior one. So as we stand up, Right foot is gonna stay right where it is. Left foot is going to be in a 45 degree angle. So this is the number one thing with warrior one. It doesn't have to be a deep pose. So allow the arms here to go ahead and extend up overhead. And so as you bend through that right knee, can you imagine that that front right foot is pointing north and south, that right knee is pushing to our right side, so we should be able to ideally see the inside of that right ankle, and that back left foot is flat on the ground. If the arms start to get tired, you're welcome to bring them to the hips. And so here is the weight distributed evenly between both right and left foot. So from here, take a deep breath in, extend the arms up even more to the sky. On your exhale, we're gonna go ahead and find the arms cartwheeling to the ground, framing that front right foot. And we're gonna slowly shift that right leg back to meet the left high plank push-up pose, taking your breath here on your exhale, either knees on the ground or full body, feel free to lower to baby cobra or upward facing dog, your choice. If you know what I'm talking about, feel free to knock it out. I don't have time to go over here though. And then allow on the next exhale, however your body wants to get into down dog. So essentially we're moving and grooving. Let's flip the script. We gotta go to the other side. Inhale as the left leg comes up in the air. On that exhale, can that left knee drive through the heart center and hover and hold for just a moment or two, and then give yourself a chance to place the left foot on the ground. And so with the left foot, maybe this side feels stronger or is more flexible. There's always going to be some sort of difference. When you are ready, my friends, so let's bring the body to standing. I'm going to make a point here that I didn't make on the first side. This side, again, may feel different. Maybe it's you got to bring the feet in a little closer. This time, as we bring the arms up, Terrence, you just inspired me, friend. We're going to go to cactus arms. So we're going to bend at the elbows. And as you do, there's still a strength through the fingertips. And we're squeezing those shoulder blades together. And so is that left knee bending? Is that left knee pushing towards the left side? Are we distributing the weight evenly between front and back foot? And are our hips and belly, chest and shoulders all facing the front? I know so many things to go over. I'm so sorry, I didn't invent this, but it's all giving you a chance to concentrate on something other than the surreal and unprecedented times that we currently live in. Take a deep breath in friends. Inhale as you reach up to the sky. On the exhale, grab that light and love, bring it through heart center, frame that front left foot, kick that left foot back to meet the right, and give yourself a chance to relax. I use the term in quotes, relax in push-up pose. <laughs> what? There's relaxation in push-up pose? No, not really. And then allow the body, when you're ready on the next exhale, to either drop the knees or allow the body to come down to the ground and then give yourself a chance for either that baby cobra where the hands press into the floor, the upper body gives you a stretch through the chest and the abdomen, and then allow the body on your next exhale to meet me in a downward facing dog. Upside down tacos. All right, friends, we're gonna move through all of that again, but except we're gonna move a little bit faster. So let's take a look at our hands. On the exhale, can you take two steps to reach the front of the mat for forward fold, adjusting yourself, adjusting your feet, Go ahead, bringing the feet together, or you're welcome to keep the feet at shoulder width apart. Allow a chair pose to happen. As you sit the hips down and back, imagine your arms reaching up overhead. This time we're gonna change the position of the arms and everyone's gonna give you airplane wings. Palms facing down, squeezing through the triceps, through your upper back. Imagine your shoulder blades are squeezing up, holding a pencil together. And then on the next exhale, whew, forward fold, letting the body hang over. Inhale, my friends, as you come to standing, slowly take your time. 
Go on, giving yourself a chance to breathe. Oh, hi, puppy, saying hello. And then as you come to standing, arms are gonna reach up overhead. Can we find a moment to balance on almost 10 toes? And then come through that forward fold, hands through heart center as you let the body fold in half. That's all forward fold means. And then give yourself a chance to slowly come to flat back. So we're creating that hands to heart center or hands to thighs, flat back, placing the hands on the ground, rocking the right foot back to meet the left high plank push-up pose. Take your time, either knees to ground or full body, lowering all the way to the belly, all one motion, beautiful, keeping those elbows tucked into the ribs. Inhale into that baby cobra, stretching through the chest or shoulders. And then when you are ready, meeting me in a downward facing dog, allowing the body to fold or send the hips up or bend through the knees, however you want. Right leg comes up in the air. Take the deep breath in. On the exhale, can you plant that right foot in between your hands? Check that alignment. Let's come to standing in that warrior one. Find your body reaching up overhead, inhaling deeply, and then on the exhale, we're going to come right back down. You just got here, I know. I'm so sorry. Hands frame that front right foot. Kick that right foot back to meet the left. Find yourself immediately kicking back into down dog. We're going to go right into the second side. Left leg comes up in the air as you breathe in. On the exhale, let that left leg come through the heart center. Nice, Terrence. I'll see you. Find that alignment. Always check in your alignment. Right knee in line with right ankle as you come to standing up. Inhale, check everything checkpoint wise. I know it's quite a bit. So everything's facing front. And then on the exhale, cartwheel the hands to frame that front left foot. Give yourself a chance to kick left foot back to meet the right. And let's take a moment to pause for the cause. Make your way into your favorite restoration pose. So maybe it's on your belly. Maybe it's bending through the knees, sending the hips back to meet the heels. Maybe it's arms extended out in front. Maybe it's at your sides. But here's an opportune moment to say, in the midst of all of that, which is sometimes chaotic, sometimes it's difficult, we come back to our breath. And as you breathe in, can you give yourself some grace? Is now, and this is a question for you, is now an opportunity to say, oh man, thank you, body. Because we don't have to be here, my friends. We get to be. And I often think of that because of the sheer number of people that are no longer with us. And so every time I feel myself in a difficult place, I'm like, okay, I still get to feel this. So is that something that might be possible in changing mindsets or train of thought? Who knows? Something to explore. Take a deep breath in, my friends. Allow the body to simply audibly sigh it out. <sighs> and let's add on. Taking a deep breath in, allowing the arms to come just underneath the shoulders. Can you give yourself a chance to curl the toes, send your butt up into the air, waving from side to side, yo, like you just don't care. You know how it is at the club, Guadalupe. You know how you do, you know how you do. I know, Tasha, you do the same thing. Finding that downward facing dog, you're bending through the feet, you're allowing the body to move, always exploring movement. Let's take a deep breath in as we look at our hands and on the exhale, can you take one or two steps to reach the top of the mat? for a forward fold. We're gonna meet in that child's pose, I beg your pardon, that chair pose. So legs are gonna bend, we're gonna squat into that. We're gonna take a deep breath in, extend the arms straight up overhead. On the next exhale, take a deep breath in and come to standing immediately onto all 10 toes, testing the balance and then allow the heels to fall to the ground, allow the body to gently float to the floor for a forward fold. Inhale into flat back, creating that tabletop, hands to hips or the shins or heart center, and then planting the hands, let's come into that push-up pose. Many veterans here in attendance, some active duty, so push-up pose is no stranger to us. Allow the knees to fall to the ground or give yourself a chance to slowly lower all the way to your belly. Nice job, Finn. Give yourself a chance here to stretch through the front of the chest and abdomen, so maybe it's a baby cobra. Maybe it's a full on upward facing dog. Whatever you do, do so comfortably and safely and then allow the legs to either bend or squeeze through the hips and the core and send the body right up into the air as you move into your upside down V. Downward facing dog. Right leg comes up in the air. We're gonna move from more uh, three-legged dog to warrior one, warrior two. Right foot comes in between the heart center. 
placing it, check the alignment. As we come up into that warrior one, check this out. We're gonna move into warrior numero dos, opening and squeezing. So here, I want you to take off your mats, take up all of this space. So let's take a peek at our feet. That right heel is in line and intersecting with that left arch. And so regardless of wherever you're looking, so imagine two panes of glass are squeezing your body in. It's like in Star Wars when Han Solo, Princess Leia, and Luke Skywalker were about to get squashed by the trash compactor. Can you tell that I'm a Star Wars nut? I have Star Wars tattoos. I'm a fanatic. All right, so what are we focusing on? Oh, I see you, Sam. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. So thumbs up with that. So as you extend the arms forward, what are you looking at? Is it something in front of you? Do you want to test your balance and close your eyes? In that warrior two, that right leg is still bent, just like it was in one. That right knee is still pushing to the side. We just opened up the stance. Beautiful. I'm also talking here to keep you in this place because sometimes it's holding it. I got it, Sam. You're good. Thank you. Because I can, yeah, I can see them. Thank you very, very much. And so in this warrior two, as you focus the body and you look forward, give yourself a chance here to bend into that right knee just a little bit more. Oh my gosh, what are we burning? And then slowly take a deep breath in and on the exhale, just straighten that right leg. Bring the hands up to the sky. Whew. Inhale deeply, relax the legs. And then on the exhale, rebend into that warrior two. And then on your exhale, straighten that right leg, arms reach for the ceiling. You're welcome to keep the focus in front of you or to the sky itself. And then one last time, inhaling right back into that warrior two. On your next exhale, allowing the hands to reach up overhead, straightening that right leg. Take a deep breath in as you imagine both feet facing to the right. We're gonna come into a wide-legged forward fold. So just gently bend through the knees as you allow the body to hang heavy. Every time I hang heavy, my Dixie cup falls off. So in that wide-legged forward fold, can you bend through one leg, straighten through the other? Just really giving yourself a chance to once again find movement, explore. This is another way to stretch and lengthen and elongate different muscle groups. When you are ready, my friends, find stillness. Allow the hands to continue to support you underneath the shoulders. Can you imagine bringing the body up into that flat back? So imagine we're coming into that halfway lift and then bending through the knees, slowly making your way to standing. Come back into your warrior two position so that right knee is bent, focusing directly in front of us. Arms are extended out behind us and to the side, giving yourself a chance to hold nice and steady. So imagine I'm going to press into the tops of those arms, but you're not going to let me. Nice job. High fives are always encouraged during yoga. Take a chance here to breathe. And then on your next exhale, can you bring that left hand out in front to circle and frame that front right foot? So we're going to come back down to the ground. Kick that right leg back to meet the left. Come into push-up plank. From here, right up into down dog, so no float. We're gonna slowly bring that left leg up, take a deep breath in. On the exhale, bring that left knee through heart center, giving your body a chance to plant the foot on the ground, check your alignments, knee in line with ankle as we make our way up to warrior one. In that warrior one as the arms reach up, breathe, 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 breathe. And maybe that smile asana creeps across your face. That's where the corners of your mouth try to touch your earlobes. And then let's open up into that warrior two. So as that warrior two opens, I love this. So imagine again, that left knee is pushing off to the side and I'm staying here by the camera so I can see you all. So thank you all for having cameras on, I do have them. And then give your back right leg a chance to maybe open up where you're finding strength in that stance. So the legs are nice and wide. And so as you breathe in and the arms are reaching forward and directly back behind you, can we take the deep breath in and on the exhale, straighten that left leg. Yes, and that we're going to fly these angels. Arms come up. Inhale, coming back to warrior two. Can you hear your own breath? Exhale, ha, ah, straightening that left leg, arms reaching up. Inhale, coming in one last time. And from here, the last time, exhale as you straighten that left leg, arms reaching up, turning our toes to face our other side, and then give yourself a chance to come into that wide-legged forward fold. Ooh. And so here, if you can, let's keep those hands on blocks or hands on the ground. Really think about bending through the right knee and then slowly straightening that and bending into the left. So just giving yourself a chance to open sway. This is an awesome stretch for the inner growing. 
This pose here is also awesome for our lower back. If you're finding some tension there, give yourself a chance then when you are ready to find some stillness in the middle, we'll come to a halfway lift. So we're gonna come up and create that flat back and then make our way all the way to standing. And as you come back up, we're gonna turn the left foot facing front, north and south, back right foot. We're gonna meet right back in that warrior two. We're gonna finish out this here. And so on the next inhale, we take the deep breath in, really extending arms back and in front. And then on the exhale, cartwheel that right hand down and that left to frame that front left foot. Take a moment here to kick the left foot back to meet the right. And here on your next exhale, allow the body to come up into that downward facing dog. We're gonna float through one more series here. Right leg comes up in the air. Do a little bit of core work. Can that right knee kiss and touch that right elbow? Oh boy. Inhale, back up into the air, right leg comes up. Can that right leg cross the body and aim to touch the left elbow? Breathing, inhale, right back up into the air. On the exhale, bring that right leg through the heart center, placing it in between your hands, checking your alignment. Let's come up into high lunge. So we're balancing now on the ball of that back left foot. That right knee is bent. I promise you all of the physicality of this is almost done. And then give yourself a chance to slowly extend the arms out. So here's something I want to encourage you to do. As the arms come out, if you don't have a wall in your way, T, I see you. Give yourself a chance to take up space. This is yours. All of this, this is you. And this is what we do when we get ready to embrace someone. This is what we do when we say, yo, at the end of Shawshank Redemption, I'm taking all of God's grace in. This is what we do. So can you give yourself an opportunity to strengthen and lengthen and then allow the hands to come to heart center and bring it in. Still in that high lunge. I know your legs are killing you, Tasha. You're doing amazing, love. I see you, boo. And then give yourself a chance to bring the hands down onto the ground. Can you place that left hand on the inside of that right foot and then gently stretch that right hand to the ceiling? And so here we're just opening up. Twists are important because they help detoxify the body. Like, yo, if you don't twist on occasion and gently and safely, then it'll end up like a dish rag in the sink, smelling like toe jam and Doritos. And you walk in the house and you're like, yo, what is happening? Yeah, we don't want any of that. Right hand slowly on the exhale comes to frame that front right foot. Right foot kicks back to meet the left. High plank push up pose. Take the deep breath in. On the exhale, send your bum up into the air. Wave from side to side like you just don't care. And let's do the other side. We are almost done, my friends, because the rest of this is going to be a guided rest and meditation. Left leg flies into the sky. On that exhale, that left knee maybe kisses that left elbow. Yes, ma'am. And then inhale as the left leg comes back up into the air. On the exhale, we cross the body. Can it kiss maybe the right elbow? Maybe it doesn't, and that's okay. Inhale back up into three-legged dog. When you're ready, that left leg flies through the heart center. We place it on the ground. Check to see that the front foot is flat in line with ankle and knee. Come up into your high lunge. So we're balancing on the ball of that back right foot. So I'm going to test your balance here for just a moment. Maybe you close your eyes for a brief moment, maybe, because it changes the proprioception. It's one of my favorite words. It changes the body's ability to find balance and where it is. Good. So with the eyes open, arms extend out, give yourself that big old huge deep breath in. What are we bringing in? We're bringing in light and love and warmth and freshly baked chocolate chip walnut cookies and a kale salad because that's balance and then bring it in the heart center. Breathe, and on your exhale, bring the hands down to the ground, right hand to the inside of that left foot, and the left hand is gonna to peel towards the ceiling. So in this low lunge runner's twist, you're giving yourself a chance to stretch. Again, doing what it is that you can, absolutely zero pressure here. And if the body can, you'll stretch the fingers up a little higher. So imagine we wanna to touch the clouds. We wanna grab the sunlight. Draw the shoulders away from the ears. And on the next exhale, take a deep breath in. Slowly let that left hand float back down to the ground. Slowly kick that left foot back to meet the right. My friends, however you choose 
slowly lower the body or flip and twist slowly. We're gonna make our way into a comfortable position. So whether it's seated, whether it's laying down, whatever it is that you wanna do, allow the body to simply find stillness. Quick short story in our final few minutes here. I started my therapeutic journey in 2010. I was post-divorce and I desperately needed help. All sorts of cognitive behavioral therapies. I have been now emotionally sober for 11 years. So 2010, fast forward to 2015. I met Deborah Jeanette at a Wanderlust event in Brooklyn, New York. That's a yoga festival. And she had to sign up for the Veterans Yoga Project. Hey, what's this? I'm a veteran. And that day changed my life forever. And it wasn't until I had the opportunity to sit with Dr. Dan Libby. And he explained to me for the first time clearly why the breath is important. Dr. Hines, thank you for sharing that. So as you give yourself an opportunity to settle into the stillness, not only are we removing ourselves from the hamster wheel, we're giving our body, your physical body a break. But check this out, even though you're in stillness and you're breathing and you're letting the physical external exoskeleton rest, that miracle that you are, your body's energy centers, the blood flow, the sparking of the engagement of cells breathing in and dying, breathing in and being born is all happening at the same time. So give this outer shell an opportunity to rest. And can you imagine and truly believe that you are made of the same materials that the stars are? Because guess what? You are. You, my friends, as you relax the shoulders away from the ears and you deepen the breath, can we lengthen the exhale? Give yourself a chance to tune into the walking, beautiful universe that you are. And I salute you. I celebrate you. Can you take an opportunity here to celebrate yourself? And so after I met Dr. Dan and I met Rebecca Smith and Brianna Renner, Deb Jeanette, I found myself for the first time in my life able to truly give myself grace, compassion. And over the course of the last six years, I had struggled immensely. I had fallen off the wagon, so much so that in June of 2020, my entire life became upended. Everything that I knew was taken away. Part of it was my fault, part of it was a pandemic, part of it was broken democracies but I found myself in a position to shift. So I say all that to say to you, give yourself a chance to shift. How? Breathing in. As you breathe in, the body's sympathetic nervous system is saying, hey, what's up, are we okay? Extend the exhale, breathe slowly out. That's your body's activation of a decompression and a calming effect. So as you continue that cycle of breathing in slowly, finding stillness, what do I do now with all of these thoughts running through my mind? Yo, let them be there. Acknowledge them, see them, hear them, pin them for later, put them on the table for discussion at another point, but come back to this. You will never silence the mind. If any one of a meditation teacher starts to lead and says, we're here to shut the mind off, Walk out, that doesn't happen. Breathe in, I see you Tasha, thank you love. Breathe in, take the thoughts that you're thinking. Then can you come back to the exhale? Can you come back to the grace that you carry? Can you come back to the strength that you carry? Can you come back to the courage and the strength and the wisdom and the patience and the diligence that you already have? Can you come back to recognize your own body's perseverance and fortitude and tenacity? Yo, let's think about the last 14 to 20 months. Think about you, think about the community, think about friends, family, coworkers, think about the strangers that you don't know. And can we inhale deeply and allow that love and support and blessings to rain upon their heads?
The next 60 seconds are yours in silence to enjoy. Simply breathe. I lovingly invite you to open and close that beautiful jaw of yours a few times, further relax the face, allow the shoulders to melt away from the ears. And with that subtle movements, maybe those subtle movements start to creep into our toes, into our fingers. Can we imagine energy surging through our wrists? Can we imagine the body feeling that power move through arms and legs? Can we imagine it flowing through our pelvis and hips and growing into our vital center core where our liver and kidney energies and spleen and heart center exists and we let that flow then through the throat into our minds and as you slowly make your way to a seated position take your time getting comfortable one of the greatest pillars of vyp's foundational base is gratitude so my invitation to you is to bring one hand to heart center one hand across the belly Can you imagine then as you breathe in, allowing something that feels a little bit like gratitude to flow through you and from you and out to everything that surrounds you. And as you feel your heart beating, can you take a moment to thank your physical body, your mind, and then your spirit and your soul for having carried you, my friends, because we're still here. And then take a moment to say thank you to our community our family, our friends, you all the homies and peeps in our tribe. And then I invite you either out loud or to yourself to declare one thing that you were grateful for. Oh, and over the course of the next audible sigh, maybe the fingertips move again. Maybe we just give ourselves a chance to self-love hug. And I wish you all the peace in the world and may you share it with others. May you and your families continue to stay safe and healthy and well. All of the light and love inside of me honors the light and love inside of each and every one of you. Continue please on paths of peace and clarity and continue to trust the journey.